This is one of the existing site mounting brackets on our follow spots in this job, so we're going to try and redesign it and make it better, more robust, so it physically goes onto the controller. So let's uh, take a look at what we can do about that. And what we're doing is this. These are the uh, follow spot controllers for the bad boy follow spots you've got in the two. And we've had problems with the uh, mounting of the sights on them because they're not really designed for that. So what we've done is Keith has designed a uh, replacement for this back panel, which has a bit that sticks up and is then going to uh, support the, uh, the sight so we can actually physically screw them onto these and they hold in place. So we've got uh, the use of the Hack Labs laser here. It's a giant big laser, it's really huge. And uh, Keith's just uh, fine-tuning the data for that. And uh, then we're going to try and cut some prototypes out and see how it goes. So uh, I'll show you the results in a moment. Tweaking the file because the first attempt uh, has just yeah, shown there's a few anomalies to the file. And uh, since Keith isn't used to actually making these uh, uh, 2D sort of uh, laser cutting files, where it's just that usual learning curve right at the beginning. So. Uh, and then we'll cut some prototypes. Type now on thin MDF woods, just to get an indication of how the sizing is going to fit, and we're just going to tweak the hole uh, spacing just that tiny bit, just to make it perfect. As long as the back bits. Is that even going to pick that out? Or is it going to focus you? It's been alright. It's not focusing, it's focusing on everything, it's focusing, yes. <laughs> Keith, no. <laughs> that smells good to me. So you may be able to spot some minerals. <laughs> yeah, it's good one enough, one. no, no, it's fine for the X well, we and Y sort of sizing. Mmm, yeah. so. smells good, smells like uh, joysticks. How's it looking so far? Is it looking fairly accurate? Let's try. No. Oh, yeah. Off the freshly done acrylic. So, um, how's well, it looking? Line up. All right, okay. So, that is the other shoot. That is a lineup as well because we did the measurements. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, so time to go for a... So what sort of thickness of acrylic are we going to use? It doesn't have to be too thick for, the, for this because... Uh, well, uh, it's a stiffness. Do you want to have a flavour of the stiffness? Yeah, because so we've got to match that because that is... That's, that's it's not... Yeah. Want. I want it rigid enough that the thing's not, gonna, not easily going to be snapped or anything else. I mean, that, okay. I think it's 4 mil. Oh, hang on. Weirdly, we can actually change this. <laughs> Yeah. There's kind of science involved in the laser cutter, it turns out. You think it's going to mm. turn it off until it works. Well, you think <laughs> it's going to work in some measurable, repeatable way, yeah. and then it doesn't. And you're like, oh, so, why? So, we've tweaked right. around with pretty much everything. We used to have a... You ready? We used to have a laser yeah. engraving. Okay. See if we can capture it. Kind of goggles, so it would be yeah. like, a dichroic coating on the back of the glass, and you'd have it with the laser, so you right. could do very high res. Yeah. Um, Stuff like that, that was, that was quite different. And that machine probably cost quite a lot of money. And we're talking 20 years ago, it was a very expensive machine. I think if you buy proper branded versions, uh, they, they got down to the levels of uh, if you had, because do you know how colour dichroics work? It's, um, mm -hmm. it, basically, it's a vacuum uh, system where it's, it's a mineral deposit that is back in fact called on to back of glass which right. basically works as a notch filter so you right. it, it chooses which frequencies of light you want to see. Yeah. And the guys the magnetization of the same thickness in the wave yes. yeah. right. And the, the guys that were doing the uh, the cutting of these had figured out a way of depth cutting it. So you could ah, actually change the colour of it by right. taking by just using the right power to change <coughs> the tail to some colours. Yeah. And but that was how we managed to board it. Oh, okay. But it was you know, basically ended up with two colours. Uh -huh. you, you couldn't get more than that. It was too. It was a bit too. Uh, yeah. Too complicated for that. But, um, yeah, it was a pretty nifty messing around experimentation. This is looking good so far. Yeah. Okay, we'll cut all the way through. So can close it. If this feels sturdy, then I think we just go with it, don't we? Yeah. It's certainly worth a try. So how many We have 12. 12? Mmm. Yeah. So how's this looking I'll so far? It on backwards. 
It doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter. It's it the fits. fact it fits, which is the main thing. Yeah, that's looking good so far. I'm turn it around and put it the right way around. Yeah. I might even take the film off it because I'm committed now. Yeah, and it'll look a lot sexier with the film off. Absolutely superb. Spot on. Spot yeah, on. <laughs> the, 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 spot on. The reason that's recessed in is so the side uh-huh. sits quite clear of that. Okay. Yeah, that looks pretty good so far. Yep, that looks neat. And you've got enough height above them to give access to the yeah. other control knobs. Yep, this is looking good. into a sheet so that's us sorted for all the follow spots and ready to go and install some of them and see how well they work. We bypass all the uh, safety interlocks now and we'd like to put your hand in there and we'll cut another one out of your hand if that's okay. No, not one die. Okay, that's no problem. Most of the Embra Hack Lab and they've got, I really like the fact they've got these monitors all over the place just with information on them. It's a, kind of like it's just how a hack lab should be. Lots of nice monitors and display panels ripped off from uh, various applications. You know, they've been taken out of skips or salvaged and then just repurposed. I, I do like this. It's just, it's a very active place. It's got a lot of stuff. I like it. And then there's the awkward party button. Which turns the lighting party. down Where is the party? and plays a speech sample. Not the complete speech sample, it's not got the full on gay Dalek underwear party, but that's okay. So here's the unit with the back cover on now, and it's got the sight added, so if we can just target Vince here with the sight, as you can see, it has to be the exact angle before that little uh, mark appears, and there we've targeted him. Let's get his forehead. No, it's moving. That's the problem with moving targets, isn't it? Yeah, but it's looking good so far. It's looking very nice. It's looking a smart, robust unit. It's in situ in the unit, uh, so you can see the size and how if the, as soon as you go slightly out of alignment, that little green cross here disappears. You get that in the centre of that site, and that uh, gives you an indication of where your follow spot is pointing. So this is a bracket mounted on the arm of the uh, follow spot, this uh, manual control section, and that's looking pretty good. So um, yeah, that's a good result.